But now it's time to get a little bit nostalgic with my chai layer cake with its maple meringue frosting. The reason I get a little sentimental, it's inspired by my very own wedding cake. So first thing, I have to go check on some cakes in the oven. The cake I'm making is a two-tiered cake. I've baked off three six-inch layers that are gonna be the topper for my cake. So now, while this cools, I'll make the nine-inch base for the cake. Starting with three and a third cups of cake and pastry flour. I'm gonna sift some of this in to make room for my one and a third cups of sugar. And now for the baking powder, five teaspoons. Five teaspoons is the same as one tablespoon plus two teaspoons. The lead spices in a chai spice blend are cardamom and ginger, so I add two teaspoons of each. Now for some cinnamon, a teaspoon and a half, and I need a little clove and black pepper, three quarters of a teaspoon of each. Before I put this on the mixer, I'll add my butter. One and a third cups of unsalted butter. I've diced it up and let it sit out so it comes up to room temperature. I need one and a third cups brown sugar. really smell those spices as the butter works its way in. I need one and a third cups of buttermilk. There we go. And I'll add four eggs and give it a light whisk. Grab my two teaspoons of vanilla. And I add this all at once to the batter, and I just let it mix for about a minute. I'll divide this between my three nine-inch pans. Take just a second to spread the batter. I lined each of the pans with parchment paper on the bottom, and then I greased and floured the sides. And the cake layers only take 30 minutes in a 350 oven. So here are my nine inch cakes out of the tins and cooled. I'll just set these aside next to my six inch cakes that are cooled too. But now it's time to jump right into this maple meringue frosting. I have three egg whites, and I'm going to add to that half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. As I'm whipping the egg whites first, I'll add three tablespoons of sugar. And you're probably looking at this and saying, well, that doesn't look like enough frosting to cover a nine inch cake, because it's not. I have to cook a cup plus two tablespoons of maple syrup, and I cook that to 242. The cooked sugar gives the meringue structure, so it holds its volume, but also stays in place when you use it as a frosting. There we go. You can tell it's thickened up a bit. It also concentrates the flavor. The finishing touch, adding two teaspoons of vanilla. And frost away. Now for the second layer. Now for the top layer.
And now I'll start covering the sides. I don't worry so much about how it looks so long as I get a decent amount on the sides because I'm going to scrape some of the frosting off. You need something with a right angle. You press it at a slight angle right on the cake and you just run it around. And then the finishing touch is just to pull that frosting on the top. When it comes to this nine inch layer, I don't worry so much about the top. It's all about the sides. And why is that? Well, I'm gonna put a six inch cake right on top of it. And then the finishing touch after I stack the cake, well, some sugared edible flowers. So to get ready to sugar your flowers, you need egg white. And I have three types of sugar here. I have super fine sugar, which is perfect for delicate flowers. And I have regular granulated sugar, and I have decorator sugar. So let me start with a carnation. So it just gets a light coating all over the petals. And dip it right in the super fine sugar. Now for a daisy. Some in the center, and I'll tap off any excess. Now for the orchids, oh, I have to go big on these. Going for the decorator sugar, and I'm gonna cover the entire petal. It just looks like a jewel. What a gorgeous collection of flowers. And now it's time to stack my six inch tier on top of my nine inch tier. And what you need to do is basically give the six inch something to rest on that's not the cake. So what I do is I drop in a doweling till it hits the bottom. And then just with my thumb, I mark where the top of the cake is. Then I just make a little notch using a serrated knife. You can actually break the doweling easily. And now you drop it in. They don't have to be precisely measured. But I lift it up and over and rest it right on top. I don't want to build a wreath of flowers and completely hide the cake, just little pockets as if they were just, oh, scattered. Here. And now for the top, I'll put some big ones to kind of create a frame here. And I saved an orchid for right on top. I love how the sparkle of the sugared flowers just adds to the cake, and you'll be so proud to present this at your special occasion.